Hey everybody, welcome to another Fush video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Takara Tomy Transformers Masterpiece Bumble figure, or as he is better known, Bumblebee. Bumblebee is definitely one of the most anticipated figures to ever be released in this line, and it is just really, really awesome to see him. It seems that he was everybody's favorite figure, or favorite, at least favorite character, back in 1984 when the cartoon first aired. I mean, there was a lot of focus placed on him in the series, it seemed. He was like kind of like the, the, the character that kids were able to relate to the most, so a lot of people really, really had a lot of affection for him back then. And it blows my mind that we are up to release number 21 in the Masterpiece line. I mean, I, I guess that stands to reason because it's been around for more than a decade now, but it's just, it's hard for me to believe there are so many Masterpiece figures now in the collection. It, just seeing the number like that is a shock to me, but it, it totally adds up and makes sense just considering how many different figures and characters we've gotten in just the past couple years. But here is Bumblebee finally, and he was a character where we weren't really sure if he was ever going to make it into the Masterpiece line because of, uh, because of Volkswagen, basically. They're, they're, they're not wanting their brand to be associated with war toys. So Transformers, you know, one of the main story elements is that they are constantly at war. So that was, that was the holdup. But I guess Takara was able to work something out because uh, here it is. I'm holding it in my hand, an authentic bumblebee based on a Volkswagen bug. That That's awesome. <laughs> it's just awesome. So it gives us hope for characters like Jazz, too, who are hopefully coming in the future. But anyway, this is the standard Masterpiece Autobot car packaging. There's the hologram of authenticity at the bottom. And then on the back, we get to see Bumblebee, a comparison shot with Optimus Prime and all the accessories and everything. So those are some pictures. How about we get this guy open and see what we're getting here? So why don't you sit tight while I get this guy out? Once again, thanks for checking us out here on the Foosh, and we're going to get Bumblebee opened here, and let's see what we're in for. Here is Bumblebee out of the cardboard outer box, and what we see is the plastic shell filled with, with all kinds of Bumblebee-esque goodies, and he's got the plastic bag that comes with the instructions and the collector card and all that good stuff. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. So in the tray, we get, of course, Bumblebee himself. He's packed in his alt mode. We get Daniel in his exosuit. Whoops. Come on, Daniel. Stand. There we go. We also get a pistol for Bumblebee. Let's see. A swappable face for Bumblebee. That has this weird kind of creepy smile to it. And then a spare tire for Bumblebee. So not a bad amount of gear here. But tell you what, let's focus on Bumblebee here specifically for a moment. Okay, so it is definitely based on a Volkswagen Bug, and it doesn't look that bad. All the panels seem to fit together kind of nicely. It doesn't look that much like a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, there are these lines all over the place, and that, of course, is due to how his transformation integrates into the mode. But overall, it's not too bad. It's got a nice glossy paint job on it. There are some paint variances here. There's some bits that are painted. I don't know if this is going to come across on the camera. But this portion here and the top, what the piece that becomes his chest is all painted yellow. And then the bits that become his feet here are cast in yellow. And it's not a 100% perfect match, but, but it's close. It's pretty close. And again, I'm not sure how much that's going to show up on camera. But in person, though, there's definitely a difference. Okay. Now on the back here, there's this little black bit that looks like it should be a license plate, but it doesn't actually have any information. That can pop off if you have fingernails, which I do not. There we go. And then that piece fits in this little area here in the spare tire. It keeps it nice and safe and secure. And then you can just plug this into that same spot and then there's Bumblebee with a spare tire. 
Now the original Minibot figure did have something of a spare tire. It was just a sticker on the figure. But here we get a full-blown molded piece. So not too bad. And if you look at the underside, it's I mean, it's a bunch of robot parts, but we don't have like a robot smiling and looking at us here. So it integrates fairly well. All the robot parts form the car nicely. So how about we get him transformed to his robot mode? That's why we're here, right? I'm just gonna put Daniel and the accessories to the side for now while we get Bumblebee transformed. Now the first thing we gotta do is free up what will become his feet. And that comes down like this. We can already see his waist right there. And then we unfold that, his legs all the way. And then we can separate them. We can actually go ahead and just form his legs now too, his feet. So that folds up like this. And then on the back here, you see this huge panel just kind of sticks out. That literally just wraps around and pegs in. And then the wheel folds up. And we can do that again over here. We can fold up the wheel and then fold this all the way around. And there's basically Bumblebee's lower half. Now this piece folds in as far as you can get it to go. And then this whole thing just kind of folds out around it. And that gives us Bumblebee's lower half already. Let me get the camera adjusted here a little bit. Now this, everything else here, what we can do is free up the arms next. And those are kind of tabbed in at the top there. And that whole thing just folds down, folds down. And his arms are tabbed in to the side here. And then we've got to flip them around. This piece can also be flipped to the back side of his arm. And then his hands just fold out. We can do that again over here. Untab, fold that guy around somehow. There we go. Spin the arm, expose the hand. Okay, so there's, I mean, he's starting to look like Bumblebee. Now, this whole contraption comes undone. And presto, let's do that again. That was just on there just like that. And it just folds down and that reveals his head. And there's kind of like a false rear window here that becomes his chest. Now this, this bottom part folds in like that. And then this whole, and maybe I should do that secondly. Forget here. This whole thing spins around. Okay, there we go. Now we can fold that in. And then that comes down and that basically forms his back. Okay. And then I'm gonna use this gun to help me out here. On his chest here, there's a panel that flips around that reveals his Autobot sigil. Okay. So there is Bumblebee in his robot mode. Let's get close up there. Let's actually get a close up on his face. That is definitely Bumblebee, as I remember him from the cartoon. It's actually a pretty good sculpt. Um, a lot of people were concerned about it because in promo images, it wasn't looking all that hot. But here, I think it looks pretty good. And the swappable face that he comes with, it's very, very similar. It's just, there's a slight smile to it. And to do that, I gotta use a little tool here because I have no fingernails. Ah, let's see if I can get it done. There we go. What I'm using here, my tool is a, a sword for Grimlock that Fans Project produced. So there, we have this horror, nightmare, faceless bumblebee now. And then we can just eh, slide in the new smiling face. And there it is. Bumblebee's all happy and smiley now. So, I mean, it's a subtle difference. There's also, there's a third face 
that's out and around. It's it's the battle mask that makes him look a lot like the original Minibot. Uh, I don't have that at the moment. I bought one off eBay a few days ago, but it has not arrived yet. It was a uh, I think it was an Asian market exclusive that came with the masterpiece figure, but we here in the states didn't get it unless we ordered certain package deals with some of the retailers. I did not do that, so for the moment, for the time being, my Bumblebee is battle maskless. So let's take a look at everything else here. Um, yeah, this definitely, this is a good representation of Bumblebee from, from the cartoon. You know, his proportions are maybe a little bit more boxy than some people would like, but that's just one of the, I guess, one of the realities of translating a robot mode to a real-world Volkswagen mode. And his shoulders are adjustable, too. It looks like I didn't have them in quite the right, in the right spot. So let's get a look at him from all angles. The back here is the only thing that's kind of iffy, the way the whole, that whole portion of the car just kind of sits back there like that. It's not bad. I actually kind of like it. Uh, the original Minibot just had a plain black back, and I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what he looked like from the back in the cartoon, but I know it wasn't this. But I really don't mind this as much as I thought I would. It doesn't really, at least I haven't seen it happen, it doesn't lock in all that securely, it just kind of sits there. So, yeah. And then as far as articulation goes, I mean, his arms have a great range of motion. He's got a ball-jointed shoulder. Let's see, he's got a bicep swivel and a hinged elbow. His wrists don't have a swivel, which is kind of surprising to see. But that's a point of articulation I don't really feel like I'm going to miss here. And then his hips are kind of hinged and swiveled. So really good range of motion there. And he's got knees that can get a full 90 degrees. Let's see here. They're kind of like double-jointed knees, actually, now that I'm looking at them. But that's pretty good. And, and of course, he's got kind of like an ankle rocker thing going on, so he can get in some, some cool poses. And then his pistol just fits in either hand, pegs in nicely. And then, yeah, there's Bumblebee. I'm really, really anxiously awaiting the battle mask to get here, because that is probably how I will display him, I think. And then something else that he comes with, which I almost forgot to mention, because it comes in the bag with the instructions. Just like Wheeljack, he's got a little bag full of, like, a, not full of, but there's two rear view mirrors here for his car mode that can be plugged in. They're just black. I don't even know if I'm going to bother, because I really don't care. So I haven't even bothered opening this yet. But they're there if you want to add them in. Um, let me see if I can at least tell where they peg in. In his robot mode, I can't... Oh, well, maybe it's there. But I can't really tell where they peg in in his robot mode. I'd have to transform him back. But you have that option. Let's see here. Now, Daniel. I'm going to put Bumblebee off to the side here. And we're going to take a look at Daniel. Daniel, of course, is Spike's son, and he first appeared in the 1986 movie. In fact, let me, uh, let me grab Spike, the Spike that came with Optimus Prime, for just a second. Okay, let me zoom back out here. We'll do a comparison with Spike and Daniel. So this is Daniel in the full exosuit. And there's Spike, who looks, wow, that is quite the difference there. I guess the way the cartoon made it look, the exosuit wasn't really that much larger than their, than their just, you know, not suited up human forms. And if you look at their heads, holy mackerel. Yeah, these two aren't really in scale with one another, I don't think. Because Daniel's head is just way bigger than Spike's. Just way bigger. So, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> um, I've got Spike here usually manning that little robot gizmo in Optimus Prime's trailer. So that's probably where he's going to stay. Because Daniel looks like he's got a good case of gigantism going on. I'm not sure what the heck is up with that. 
But otherwise, on his own, Daniel looks pretty good. This definitely looks like the exosuit from the from the movie. And it looks pretty good from all sides. He's got these thrusters on his back. Everything integrates well, and he actually can transform. The arms kind of have a wonky range of motion. I'm not really a fan. Like, they can't just raise and lower like a normal pair of arms are. And I always have a problem with the ball joint here popping off. And his hands just kind of look kind of funny. That's his hand right there. So here he is just kind of making the classic superhero pose with his hands. Uh, that's just kind of how I display him because he can't really lay his arms at his side well. That's about the best that you can do. So his arms don't have the greatest range of motion in the world. His legs are okay. Again, you don't get a full 90 degree bend out of him. That's about as good as you get. I mean, this, this is definitely just kind of like a pack-in accessory more than anything. But as far as pack-in accessories go, he's not so bad. Here's Frenzy, Masterpiece Frenzy. And Daniel is a little bit larger than Frenzy. So that kind of gives you an idea of the scale that we're looking at here for Daniel. So he does have an alt mode. And to do that, let's see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. you got to pop off the little plastic helmet first. And his head can kind of look up. He looks like he's got these giant earrings on. You can kind of see that the metal peg in there. It's kind of unnerving at first. But you make his head look up. And then you can pop that thing back on. Then, let's see here. I'm already forgetting the steps here. I'm doing this from memory. I think I'm going to do the back half first. So here, his wheels unfold and come around and they form a wheel. And then his foot goes back and forms that. So again, we do that same thing over here, form the wheel, and then his foot kind of goes back. And then that flips forward a little bit. And then those peg together. And then you push them up a little bit. And that kind of forms the back end of the vehicle mode. His arms are a little bit tricky and finicky. Uh, this piece flips down and reveals a wheel. Same with that side. Now I think this whole, the, yep, this whole apparatus flips down. And then this has to open up. Again, I need help because I have no fingernails. So I'm using my tool here. Okay, those chest pieces open up like that. And then, let's see. Yeah, that just folds up. There's a peg right there. And then there's a peg hole that corresponds to it. So that just kind of snaps in place there. And that wing thing comes down. I don't remember what I just did. Let's see if I can do it again. Egg hole, apparatus, there we go. So there is Daniel in his alt mode. And yeah, that is some kind of alt mode, all right. It looks kind of neat, that little future sled thing that he turned into in the, in the movie. I mean, not so bad. And I don't know, maybe, maybe Spike can be the pilot of the sled thing. But I guess if he sits here, he's getting blasted in the feet by the thrusters, so maybe that's not the best idea. I don't know. But there is Spike or Daniel's alt mode. Then to get him back, you gotta free the arms. You can just do that. Close up the chest here. Flip this all around again. Close those shoulders, fold the wheels back, and flip the arms around. And that basically gives us his arms. And then the legs, pull them down, flip them apart, bring the feet around, flip the wheels back, and then fold them around, bring the foot down. 
And bring the foot down. So there's Daniel. Oop, and the head. Gotta move the head back into position. Okay. So there's Daniel back in his... I don't know, I don't want to call it robot mode. Maybe just his person mode. Person in armor mode. There are Bumblebee and Daniel back together as a pair. So let's get a comparison here. There's Bumblebee and Daniel, and let's throw Wheeljack into the mix. Wheeljack is one of the more standard-sized Autobot cars, of course. And Bumblebee is, man, he's just about half of his size. So I think that, I think that works. I think that scale is just pretty much perfect. Bumblebee should be pretty small. And here he is definitely pretty small. Uh, how about we do another comparison? This time with... This is Classic's Cliff Jumper. Oops, out of the way, Daniel. Here's Classic's Cliff Jumper with a few, you know, third-party embellishments. And they're about the same size. Okay, Cliff Jumper has more bulk to him. And, of course, Cliff Jumper was just a repaint of the Classic's Bumblebee. But... These two, God, I, I kind of like them together. They're about the same size. Um, I like Cliff Jumper displayed with this Bumblebee because I've always been bummed whenever we get a Cliff Jumper. All he is is a straight up red repaint of Bumblebee. But here they they're occupying two totally different bodies for like the first time in like ten years in my collection. So I'm, I'm kind of liking this right now. I'm hoping we get a retooled Bumblebee for a masterpiece Cliff Jumper. But right now I'm kind of liking this combination. So anyway, that is Bumblebee and Daniel. So how about we get Bumblebee back into his alt mode really quick here. Okay, so to do that, we just gotta lose the pistol. Okay, so let's see, where should we start? Let's start with the back end. Kind of flips up. This piece flips out, whoops, oh dear, his bumper just came off. I guess I tugged a little too hard on it. Let's see if, well, it looks like that goes back on pretty easily. It just pegs in. Hopefully this won't be a thing. Nope, it's back on, we're good, it's not a thing. Good, heart attack averted. That flips around, that comes up, and that just does that, okay? Now Bumblebee's arms here, a little bit more to them. You gotta flip the hand in, spin that around, and then we gotta bend his elbow just a little bit because there's the peg right there, and then there's the peg hole right there. So those two things just have to line up. You just gotta play with the arm a little bit to get the to get them to line up well. And then that just before we do the flip, we've got to make sure that this piece here lines up with the rest of the fender like that, and then that just kind of pops into place. Like so. And we'll do the same thing over here. Flip the arm around, fold the hand in, bring this piece up and over. Let's see here. Ah. Got it backwards here. Okay, peg the arm into that piece. Lift that around. Flip the tail light over. And then just kind of work that into place. Okay, there we go. So we got the, the back half done. And I'm gonna flip the Autobot logo around now. I'm looking at it, there we go. Now his feet are next. Just gotta take these panels out, fold them back, flip his wheel out. Simple, simple. Panels, flip the wheel, and then we can bring the two halves of the, well, we should be able to do that anyway. There we go, okay. Then we can fold this whole half down free up that part of the hood, and then his legs kind of do one of these, and then 
to just, whoops, whoops, stuff's getting away from me here. I just kind of hope everything lines up well and locks in together. And looks like we are in business. Yep, we're good, I think. I spoke too soon. There's a lot of stuff to line up here to get into the right. Ah, actually it's giving me some trouble. It's a little fiddly. It wasn't this fiddly the first time I did this. What the heck is causing the, the fiddliness here? Okay, looks like we got it. Maybe not, I spoke too soon, evidently. Okay, bumblebees all mode once again. Okay, so that's Bum Masterpiece Bumblebee by Takara. One of the, God, I'm really excited to have this figure on the shelf. I, it's funny too, because in the cartoon, I hated Bumblebee. He was my absolute least favorite character on the cartoon. I did not like him. Um, I was always more of a Decepticon guy, and I just always wanted to see Bumblebee get flattened by them. So I was never really rooting for Bumblebee. But I'm really excited to have this guy on my Masterpiece shelf. Um, I think he's, it's just because having him, he's such a significant character that having him is kind of giving me hope for more characters like Jazz, Hound, etc. So that's Masterpiece Bumblebee. Why don't you let us know what you think about this guy. Have you gotten him yet? Is he on the way? What do you think about him? Leave a comment below. Leave a comment on our message boards, uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Let us know what you think. Okay? So this has been another Foosh video review. As always, thank you so much for, for watching and tuning in. And we will see you again very, very soon. Thanks again.